Another example of abuses that are found among restorationist apologists are the abuses of original language grammars. To provide a very good example of this, I would like to reference something from the opening statement of a debate that I recently watched uh, concerning this issue between uh, about uh, baptism and justification with a Reformed uh, minister and a Church of Christ preacher. And I want to illustrate a very good example of how someone with some skill in the original language can weaponize a grammar to make it sound like they are correct, but they selectively quote from that grammar, and in this instance, they deliberately re misrepresent what the grammar has to say, and when the grammar disagrees with them later on, it is not discussed, it is ignored and dismissed. So let's take a look at this rather briefly. We're going to jump in here on the opening statement here so you can get a flavor of what we're looking at. And then we'll jump in and look at the sources and make a few comments, and we will leave the video for your consumption. All right. A great text to start with, but let me... Uh, just elaborate on Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, before I continue defining the proposition. So Jesus uh, said to his disciples that all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things, whatever I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So notice Jesus prefaced this uh, commission on his universal authority. And so this is uh, to be considered uh, in the weightiest light possible. And so Jesus, based on his universal authority, commands his disciples to go and make more disciples. Now what's very interesting is the fact that the verb there in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, mate tusata, uh, which is an imperative, Jesus tells us how that verb is to be carried out. And so he follows up that imperative verb with uh, uh, two participles, baptizantes and didaskantes, baptizing and teaching. And as Daniel Wallace says in his Greek Grammar Beyond Basics, these are participles of means. So they express how the command to make disciples is carried out. And the way that it's carried out is with a taught baptism. The disciples are to go out and they're to be teaching. They're to be teaching... Okay, we will stop sharing this screen. Uh, this is more than sufficient to show that the particular uh, COC interlocutor doesn't have a clue how to accurately read a Greek grammar. To show that, we need to go exactly to the uh, Greek grammar in question, and that would be uh, Daniel Wallace's Greek grammar beyond the basics. So to do that, I'm going to pull up my Logos program again. We'll share, and we will take a look at what we're seeing. So Mr. Hicksall cites the entry from the Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics, and he says um, as a support for his proposition, supposedly that Daniel Wallace agrees with his interpretation of this verse. However, this is the exact entry from which he is referring to. Daniel Wallace states, and this is highlighted here, and second, they obviously make good sense as participles of means. Now, I want you to read exactly how Daniel Wallace defines what he says here. The means by which the disciples were to make disciples was to baptize and then to teach. Is that what Mr. Hicksall said? No. He said that Daniel Wallace said that one is made disciples through a taught baptism. This is a deliberate misrepresentation of Daniel Wallace in order to make one sound like they are making a legitimate point. To, uh, to continue this a little bit further here, uh, let's see, let's pull up. 
uh, this additional point. Mr. Hicksaw will quote Wallace here, but he decries the uh, what is obviously called the grammatical argument of Acts 238 and says that cannot be. But when you read Daniel Wallace's in entry on Acts 238 concerning this grammatical argument, he says, and I quote, such a view is an acceptable way of handling ACE, but he adds its subtly, subtlety and awkwardness are against it. So he says this is an acceptable way of interpreting that preposition. However, he doesn't like it because he thinks it's too subtle, um, maybe a little bit awkward. So Daniel Wallace disagrees with Mr. Hicksaw. So once you again, you have a deliberate misquotation of a grammar to prove your point. It's a selective quotation of a grammar, and there will be no citation of a grammar when it actually speaks against what you're trying to have to say. I would also add um, his, his point that uh, baptism is somehow singled out from teaching um, all things we, that uh, Jesus had commanded. Even Wallace disagrees with that, that the baptism is something separate than the issue of the teaching, all things which he had commanded. The text doesn't allow for the category that Mr. Hicksaw has created. He literally made it up. There are two participles, the baptizing and, um, and also uh, the teaching. Baptism comes first, and then the teaching all things. It doesn't say all other things. It says all things. So the um, for Wallace, in his mind, the uh, it, which is a particular way that's found among many Baptists, a discipleship where you have justification, and then there's a discipleship part. I actually disagree with that interpretation. I do not believe that these are actually participles of means. They're actually... Um, things that come after the process of making a disciple because of what scripture has uh, to say in other instances. Let's pull up here. Let's minimize this. To, to support that, I would cite John 4 and verse 1, where it is clear here, here's a Greek text, therefore when Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing, and here is there's a shared direct object, more disciples than John. So in the mindset and the paradigm of the New Testament, it is clear you make disciples and then you baptize disciples. So this interpretation offered by Mr. Hicksall is also wrong based on that issue as well. This is just a short uh, primer, an example of how you can spot these types of issues and then how you can actually deal with these types of issues. If you're going to be a student of the, the original languages, I will say it again. Make sure that you are trying to understand the text of Scripture first to understand everything what God has to say. Make applications in your life. Do weaponizing for your particular denomination or sect. Once you come to see what God has to say, share what you have to know with everyone else. I hope this video is helpful to you.